Amen, amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're not going to out-worship me. God inhabits the praises of his people. And when we put everything out of our minds and say, God, for the next little while, we're going to do one thing. And we're going to give you glory. We got time to ask the petitions of him. But right now, just for a second, can we one more time just worship him in spirit and in truth? Lord, we lift our hands to you. We praise you right now. We thank you for your presence that we felt already in this service, oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen, amen. So good to have everyone here. Brother and Sister Jordan are here with us still. Such a blessing to us. Amen. And, and Sister Sadie Lane, so honored that she has uh, made her appearance on this earth, but that she's here and, uh, and, and, and having church with us. Amen. Brother Jordan, come up here and preach to us. How many is going to help the man of God preach the word today? If you are, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't we just extend our hands to the Lord right now? And would you lift up your voice? And would somebody just take a moment and really just begin to worship the Lord from the depth of your heart this morning? Come on, lift up your voice to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 What an honor it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning. A lot of places that we could be, but we came to the right place today. Feel the Spirit of the Lord wanting to speak something in this house this morning. And um, as I woke up this morning and began to pray, I, I, I felt the Lord just trying to breach something into my spirit. And I would be lying to you today if I told you that um, that it was easy to receive the word that the Lord was trying to tell me. Um, all morning, there's been different distractions, different things going on. Um, and right before I came out, I began to pray and I said, Lord, you're, you're, you're going to have to help me to understand completely what it is that you want to do in this house. And I felt the Lord begin to quicken me. Uh, there's people in this room today that have come. And some of you have come just simply because it's the appointed time. And some of you have come today maybe because you were invited by somebody to do so. And regardless of the reason uh, that you have come this morning, the fact is, is that you're here. And not only are you here, but the Spirit of the Lord is in this room today. And I, I, I would venture to say that I'm probably not the only one that has come into this house with different things going on, different trials. And it's almost like there's a fog that has tried to distract different people that are in this room today. But what we're about to do in the Holy Ghost before we ever begin to get into the Word of God is I just want somebody to lift up their hands and I want you to lift up your voice and I want you to ask God, begin to open up my eyes to see by faith. Begin to open up my ears to hear what the Spirit would say unto the church. And before we ever get rolling in this house right now, I just want you to open up yourself to receive the word of the Lord today. Come on, all over this house, would you lift up your voice? Would you lift up your voice to the Lord? Open up every eye to see. Open up every ear to hear. Open up our minds and our hearts. Let the word fall on good ground this morning. Come on, somebody needs to get into the presence of the Lord right now. You need to put off every distraction. You need to put off everything that's happened over the weekend. And you need to let the spirit of the Lord begin to flow in this house. 
Hallelujah. 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 I feel the spirit of the Lord moving. Hallelujah. I give honor to your pastor. I give honor to his family. Do you love your pastor? Do you love brother and sister Burtz this morning? I love them. I'm thankful that Sister Burks is able to be back in the house of God. I rejoice that the Lord has touched her, the Lord has healed. Hallelujah. And many of you that have been sick, I'm thankful. I give them honor. I'm thankful for their friendship. You are blessed with the best. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for them, thankful for this whole ministry team, and I'm thankful for the church. What a privilege it is. To be connected to the body of Christ. Thankful that my wife, my beautiful baby girl are both here with me this morning. And I'm thankful that the Spirit of the Lord is in this room today. Hallelujah. I turn your attention to Matthew the 17th chapter. Matthew the 17th chapter in verse number 13. Matthew 17 and verse number 13. We're just going to let the Lord begin to speak to us this morning. Is that all right with you? Hallelujah. Matthew 17 and verse number 13. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Whom do men say that I the Son of Man, am? That's an interesting question for the Lord to ask. Whom do men say that I am? just want to preach to you from the subject, whom do you say that he is? Whom do you say that he is? Would you lift up your hands one more time? Ask the Lord to open up your heart and let God begin to speak to your spirit. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost that's moving in this room today. We take authority over every distraction. We take authority over every work of the enemy and work of the flesh that's in this room today. We thank you, mighty God, for victory that's in this house. And we praise you in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together. Lift up your voice. And would you shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, would you really shout unto God with a voice of triumph. You can do better than that. You ought to give the Lord great praise in this house because he's worthy of it all. That's why David said, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Come on, I feel the faith of the church rising in this house today. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I begin to read this passage, it is an interesting thing for the God of all creation to look and say, whom do men say that I am? As you begin to open up this passage and begin to open up your eyes and your ears to begin to comprehend what's happening, it would be an interesting thing for Jesus to not know who he is. It would be a very interesting thing for God that has robed himself in flesh to not know who He is. Hallelujah. But rather, I submit to you today that Jesus did in fact know who he was. When you begin to see everything that Jesus did in his ministry here on earth, 
I would surmise that it be impossible for him to not know who he was. In John chapter 4, when the man came unto him, Jesus would look at him and say, Go thy way, thy son liveth. It was something even locked in the words of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that he would understand and comprehend uh, that his power, uh, hallelujah, or rather that when he would begin uh, to speak that there was enough power in the words that he would say uh, that it would cause the sick uh, to be healed. Uh, in the book of Mark, uh, in the first chapter, uh, when the possessed would come unto him, uh, it was simply the spoken word of Jesus Christ uh, that would cause the possessed and the vexed uh, to be set free uh, and be healed. Uh, in Matthew chapter 8, uh, the spoken word uh, of Jesus Christ uh, would be spoken over uh, those that were possessed uh, and the spirits would be cast out. Uh, the sick would be healed. Uh, Jesus would speak to the unclean uh, and command that sickness would leave them. Uh, and the Bible would say that instantaneously uh, that even leprosy uh, would be healed and cast off. Uh, he said be clean uh, and immediately he was cleansed. Uh, in the ninth chapter uh, he would command Jairus' daughter uh, to be healed and life uh, would flow back uh, into her dead body. Uh, I surmise to you today uh, that Jesus in fact uh, knew who he was. Uh, he would speak to those uh, unable to see uh, and eyes would be open. Uh, he would speak unto those uh, unable to hear uh, and deaf ears would be unlocked. Uh, hallelujah. In John the 11th chapter uh, when he stood at the tomb uh, he would begin to speak uh, to the dead corpse of a friend uh, and the word would say that Lazarus uh, began to shake uh, and breath began to flow uh, and he began uh, to live again. Uh, hallelujah. This is not a God uh, that had any question uh, of whom he was. Uh, this does not sound like a man uh, that knew not who he was. Uh, but Jesus would speak of himself uh, and say all power uh, is given unto me uh, in heaven and in earth. Uh, hallelujah. In Mark chapter 4 uh, in the middle of the sea uh, he would begin to speak uh, and the wind would obey uh, and the waves would obey. Uh, this sounds not like a God uh, that knew not who he was uh, but rather in fact a Jesus uh, that knew uh, that all power uh, was given unto him uh, in heaven and in earth. Uh, I tell you today uh, that this man uh, had no identity crisis. Uh, when Isaiah uh, would begin to speak of him, uh, he would say unto us uh, a child is born. Uh, unto us a son is given. Uh, the government shall be upon his shoulders. Uh, he shall be called uh, wonderful. Uh, hallelujah. Jesus knew uh, who he was. Uh, he said he shall be called uh, wonderful. Uh, counselor. Uh, the mighty God. Uh, the everlasting Father. Uh, the Prince of Peace. Uh, I tell you today uh, that same Jesus uh, is still uh, wonderful. He is still wonderful. Uh, he's still the counselor. Uh, he's still the everlasting God. Uh, he's still the Prince of Peace. Uh, and he's still uh, the Lord of Lords. Uh, hallelujah. The government shall be upon his shoulders. Uh, to his peace uh, there shall be no end. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, so as Jesus began to speak, uh, he asked the the question, uh, whom do you say that I am? 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, who do you say? Who am I to you? Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I come to tell you today, you can read throughout the prophets. Hallelujah. Throughout the Old Testament, they spoke of a man that would come. Hallelujah. The Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, a father to the fatherless, a friend to the friendless. Hallelujah. He would mend up the brokenhearted. And as I read the scripture, I say, why would the God of creation... Ask the question, whom do men say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said this, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He tried to tell him that some called them John, some called them Elias, but Jesus said it doesn't matter who they call me. It matters who you call me, Peter. Hallelujah. When Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God he said blessed are thou Simon Barjona hallelujah as you begin to read in the context when Peter knew who Jesus is then the Lord could tell Peter who he is and so here is Jesus saying, Peter, who am I to you? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Peter said, yes, or, and Jesus said, yes, and you are Peter. And upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. One of the greatest revelations uh, that the church could have uh, is not only who the world says that he is, uh, but who the Lord is to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, can I get a witness in the house? Can I get a witness in the house of anybody that still believes that he's a great God and a mighty God and a powerful God? He said, Peter, it does not matter what the world says about me. I've got to know what you say about me. Ladies and gentlemen, I've come to tell you today, you cannot trust everything that you hear. You cannot trust everything that you see. But ladies and gentlemen, there's something that you can trust, and it's the words in this book that were written. You've got to know who the Lord is to you. Many of you have heard me tell the testimony years ago in Bible college, walking through a Catholic seminary. And as I begin to walk through, they begin to talk to me towards the end of my tour. Hallelujah. As they begin to tell me everything that they practiced. And I asked them, I said, what's the foundation of your doctrine? And they looked at me and they said, our foundation is found in our first pope, Peter. For Jesus looked at Peter and said, thou art Peter and upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I looked back at them and I said, well, you've read the whole verse out of context. Because before Jesus called him Peter, uh, Peter called him the Christ, uh, the son of the living God. Uh, you've got to understand, uh, hallelujah, that our sure foundation uh, is not found in who we are. Uh, you could speak your own name over every trial uh, and nothing will happen. Uh, but there's some kind of power uh, that's found in the name of Jesus uh, that will cause every mountain to be moved, uh, all darkness to leave, uh, and demons to tremble. Uh, I said you must understand uh, that the revelation uh, that he would build the church upon uh, is that he is one Lord. Uh, there is one faith. Uh, there is one baptism. And they looked at me and said, this is amazing. We've never heard this. The power of the Holy Ghost fell. I'm telling you, people begin to lift up their hands as the Spirit would begin to give them utterance. And the word of the Lord began to speak to me in that hour. Hallelujah. That the Lord is asking a question to every saint and every sinner alike. And it's simply this. Whom do you say that he is? Jesus knows who he is is but you've got to know who he is 
That's why in the scripture it would talk about in the Old Testament that the children of Israel, hallelujah, would serve the Lord all the days of Joshua. And then the Bible says, and Joshua died. They buried him on the border of the inheritance. And then the Bible said, and there came up a generation which knew not the Lord nor the mighty works that he had done in Israel. Uh, hallelujah. You must understand something. Uh, it's not enough for the Lord uh, to be the God of your mama and the God of your daddy uh, and the God of your grandpa uh, and your grandma. Uh, you've got to know who he is uh, for yourself. Uh, I'm preaching about a Jesus uh, that wants to give you an experience with him uh, that you understand. Uh, he is the Lord not just of my fathers but he's got to be the Lord to me and as for me and my house we will serve the Lord yes. hear me I am so thankful for testimonies that I've heard. Uh, hallelujah. I mean, I've got so many testimonies uh, that my father and my grandfather have told me. Many of you have heard me talk about them. Uh, hallelujah. And I'm so thankful about it. Uh, I'm so thankful to hear my grandfather uh, talk about when he had no money uh, to feed his children. Uh, he was given a woman. Uh, hallelujah. A um, a uh, um, uh Ride home uh, um, uh, um, after church one night, uh, and uh, his kids and his wife were in the vehicle. Uh, and the woman looked at him and said, "Sir, uh, I have no money to eat on." Uh, and the Lord began to speak to him. Uh, he had no money in the bank account, uh, but he had a twenty-dollar bill in his pocket. Uh, and he said, "The Lord spoke to him and said, give her your last 20. And he said, but Lord, if I do it, then I'll have no money to feed my children. And the Lord said, just trust me and give what you have. He reached in his pocket, pulled out a $20 bill and said, here you go. She began to weep and said, pastor, I can't accept it. He said, you can't accept it because the Lord told me to give it to you. Hallelujah. She went home. She was so thankful. When granddaddy got home that evening, he said, as he began to pull into the house, the kids begin to talk about I'm hungry uh, and I need to eat. Uh, he knew that there was no food to feed them. Uh, and they knew it too. And they said, Dad, uh, what are we going to eat? And he said, the Lord will provide. Uh, when he opened up the door and he walked into the house, uh, he said, there were groceries uh, that filled the table. Uh, uh, he said, but you've got to understand, uh, nobody had a key to our home uh, and nobody had a way to get in. Uh, he said, Gentry, uh, he said, you need to know, uh, hallelujah, that when you trust in the Lord uh, with all of your might, uh, he'll be your great provider. <laughs> hallelujah. And I'm thankful to hear about it, but you've got to understand uh, it's not enough to hear about it, uh, but you've got to experience some things for yourself. There was a night my wife and I were in a church service and the Lord told me to give it an offering. We were going through one of the most trying seasons that we've ever been in. Uh, barely had just enough to scrape by. Uh, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, you're going to give in this offering. Uh, and I said, God, I don't have hardly any money in my bank account. Uh, but he spoke the number to me. Hallelujah. And if I was to give that offering, I knew I would have $35 left in my checking account. And I started arguing with God and destiny came to me and she said, Gentry, we're supposed to give in this offering. And I said, well, I felt it too. And I said, by chance, did the Lord tell you how much? I was praying. He said like 20 bucks. <laughs> Lord, maybe my spiritual connectivity is off. And she said, yeah, he told me. And what she spoke to me was the same number that I felt God tell me. Hallelujah. And I stopped and I thought, my God, we cannot afford this. Uh, but I remember that there was a testimony I heard uh, from my grandfather about the faithfulness of God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, 
you've got to understand you've got to know his faithfulness for yourself hallelujah I reached in the checkbook I wrote the check we came together with hands lifted high and put the offering down on the altar I began to weep for I knew that there wasn't going to be enough to pay the bills I went home that night the next day I woke up and I thought my God what have you got me into the car notes do the credit card payments do come on somebody some of y'all know what I'm talking about Uh, and I begin to pray and I said Lord uh, I know that my grandpa called you faithful uh, but I've got to know that you're faithful hallelujah it was about an hour afterwards uh, that I got a phone call uh, and the man said brother Gentry uh, he said I tried to catch you after church uh, but I could not find you Uh, he said the Lord has spoken to me uh, and I'm going to give you an offering Uh, when the check came in uh, it was Five times the amount uh, that we gave in the offering uh, on Sunday. I'm telling you right now, uh, there might be a generation that didn't know him, uh, but I'm going to know him. Uh, I'm going to know his faithfulness. Uh, I'm going to know he's a provider. It said they knew not the Lord, uh, nor the works that he had done in Israel. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I've come to tell you right now, uh, I'm thankful for heritage, uh, but heritage isn't enough. Uh, And I'm thankful for pedigree, uh, but pedigree isn't enough. Uh, I've got to know him uh, and his works. Uh, I've got to know his mighty acts. Somebody said, well, why do I have to know him? They knew not him nor his works. The Bible said that they began to serve idols and false gods and were given unto whoredom. You've got to understand right now, it's not just enough to talk about him. Hallelujah. It's not just enough to come to the house of God, but you've got to know him for yourself. You've got to understand that when you know him, you will love him when you know him you will serve him when you know him you will trust him and when you know him he will know you hear me today somebody uh, I thank God for testimonies uh, of God uh, breaking addiction uh, and healing the sick uh, but you've got to hear me right now uh, testimonies aren't enough uh, you've got to have your own testimony uh, you've got to have your own faith I remember hearing testimonies uh, of God healing cancers. Uh, Come on, tumors falling off. Uh, I remember that the doctors were running some tests on me uh, many years ago, thought that I might have cancer. Uh, Hallelujah. And I'll never forget I was so fearful uh, about what was going to happen. Uh, And I began to pray one night and I said, Lord, uh, I know uh, that you're able to heal cancer. Uh, I know that you've done it. Uh, Hallelujah. But God, it's not enough for me to know that you have done it Uh, I've got to know that you will do it Uh, when the doctor called they said I was sure uh, that it was cancer uh, but you're cancer free Uh, ladies and gentlemen I've come to tell you uh, you've got to know uh, the Lord uh, for yourself Uh, thank God for testimonies uh, but I thank him uh, that I have tried and found uh, that the Lord is good uh, and that the Lord is faithful Somebody worship the Lord right now. Hallelujah. I mean, I, I, I am coming to tell you uh, that there's got to be something uh, that sets your walk with God apart. Uh, and the something is simply this. Uh, it's not enough uh, for me just to hear about him. Uh, I've got to experience him. Uh, it's not enough uh, for me to read about him. Uh, but I've got to know him. Uh, it's not enough uh, for me to go to conventions uh, and hear about his faithfulness. Uh, I've got to know the Lord for myself. Does anybody want to know him? Come on. I said, does anybody want to know him? 
He said, Peter, you know who I am. And when you know who I am, hallelujah, the oneness of God, you've got to understand that this is the rock that I will build my church upon. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But then he said these words, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, that whatsoever you will bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you will loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You've got to understand right now that when you know the Lord and you know that he is faithful, when you know the Lord in his word, when you know the Lord in his spirit, when you know the Lord in his doctrine, there are keys to the kingdom that will be given unto you that what you bind will be bound and what you loose will be loosed. Hear me right now, somebody. We need to get back to binding the things of the enemy uh, and loosing the things of the kingdom. Uh, is there anybody in the room uh, that still believes that the prayer of faith uh, shall save the sick uh, and the Lord shall raise them up? That's why when Jesus spoke of himself, uh, he said, you've got to know uh, that all power is given unto me uh, in heaven and in earth. Uh, Jesus knew who he was, uh, but you've got to know who he is. Uh, hallelujah. You, you've heard me tell many testimonies about different things. Uh, hallelujah. But I still stand here today to tell you uh, that some of the greatest testimonies uh, that I have ever heard uh, have come from people that have walked uh, out of gangs and out of a addictions and they've tried the Lord and they found him faithful come on someone shout he's faithful there was a man that came into one of our services one night. Uh, he was a member of the Aryan um, Brotherhood. He walked in. He had swastikas and hate speech tattooed all over him. Uh, he walked into the house of God. Uh, he'd never been in an apostolic church. Uh, but as he began to sit there, the Spirit of the Lord uh, began to fall upon him. Uh, hallelujah. And as it fell upon him, uh, he began to weep. Uh, and he began to repent uh, of all of his sins. Uh, as he began to do this, I'm telling you the power of God uh, began to grip him. Uh, he came down to the front, uh, dropped down to the altar uh, and began to say, God, uh, I'm asking for your forgiveness. Uh, you hear me? If you believe uh, that he has all power, uh, then you must believe that he has the power uh, to forgive every sin. And there's no sin too small uh, and there's no sin too great. He repented when he got up off the ground. He said, I recognize that I am a sinner in need of salvation. He said, could a man like me be born again? And I stopped and I thought about Nicodemus. Hallelujah. When Jesus said, you must be born again. He said, how can I enter again into my mother's womb? And Jesus said, no, Nicodemus. It's not about a fresh start on earth. It's about a fresh start in heaven. You've got to understand that you have not gone too far. That the grace and the mercy and the love of God can't reach you. And so when he said all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, uh, it's great to read about it. Uh, but have you experienced this power? And the man said, could I be born again? And I said, sir, you can be born again. He said, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what I've been involved in. You don't know the people that I've heard. I said, maybe not. But you don't know the price that the Lord paid. And you don't know how faithful he is. And you don't know how loving he is. We baptized him in the name of Jesus. When he came out of the water, he spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave him the utterance. And he looked at me and he said, I have hated people my whole life. He said, for the first time in my life, he said, there is no hate in my heart. There is no resentment in my spirit. He said, I feel the love of God. Hey, somebody, it said all power. Power over every devil. Power over every addiction. Power over, come on, somebody. All power. You've got to understand that the Holy Ghost is able to lead you out of every temptation. That's why 1 Corinthians 10 said that God will make a way of escape for you. 
I was eating in a restaurant one day. The waitress came up. She said, there's something about you guys. What is it? I said, it's the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let me tell you right now, you have got to embrace what the Lord has put upon you. Is anyone thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost? I said, it's the power of the Holy Ghost. I said, we've been born again of water and of the Spirit. God has wiped away every tear and washed away every sin. She said, my God, she said, I pray today that I would come into contact with somebody that believed in the power of the Holy Ghost. I said, well, today is the day. She said, hear me. She said, I've got to tell you about my testimony. She said, seven years ago, I was convicted of drug manufacturing, distribution, and dealing. She said, when they... um, she said when they came into my house uh, she said they found pounds and pounds and pounds of drugs ready to be sent out Uh, she said when they came in uh, she said they put me in handcuffs Uh, she said and the officer said uh, enjoy the last time you'll ever be in your house Uh, he said there's enough that you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison Uh, she said I got into this jail cell she said and as I was waiting uh, hallelujah for my meeting with the judge uh, she said I begin to pray Uh, And I said, God, uh, I don't think I've ever talked to you. Uh, She said, but I'm asking if you're out there, uh, will you give me a sign uh, that I might know you? Hear me. I said, you've got to know him. You've got to know him. She said, there was an old man, uh, old preacher uh, that came walking down the corridor of that jail. Uh, he, she said, he came up, uh, hallelujah, to the door of that jail cell. Uh, and he said, Miss April, uh, will you be set free? And she said, no, I won't be set free. She said, I'll spend the rest of my life in prison. He said, that's not what I asked you. He said, will you be set free of the water and of the spirit? She looked at that man and said, you've got to be crazy. You don't know what they brought against me. He said, I don't know what they brought against you, but I know what the Lord has brought to you. Can I get a witness in the house, somebody? She said, I felt something move into that jail cell that I've never felt before. She said, that old man reached his hand through the jail door and said, come closer. She said, I walked to the front. He put his hand on my head. She said, I don't know what happened next, but I woke up hours later speaking in an unknown language. Come on, I said, you've got to know him. She said, when I woke up, uh, she said, I knew of a surety uh, that the Lord had met me there. Uh, She said, I lifted up my voice and said, God, uh, you have given me a sign that you're real. Uh, I thank you, Lord. Uh, She said, I asked God, I said, Lord, uh, is there any chance? uh, Is there any chance that you could set me free? And she said, I felt the spirit of the Lord speak to me uh, and say, April, uh, don't deny what you've done. And she said, Lord, if I don't deny what I've done, I'm going to die in prison. She said, I argued with God. She said, the day, hallelujah, came that I would have to meet the judge. She said, I walked into that court and the judge said, how do you plead? She said, I'd met with my counsel and we had agreed to plead not guilty because it was the only way out. She said, but as the judge said it, she said, my counsel rose to his feet and I heard the Lord say, don't run from it. Hear me right now. When you have an encounter with the Lord, you don't have to run from your failure. You don't have to run from your mess ups. Come on, somebody. You don't have to lie to yourself and you don't have to lie to the Lord. Hallelujah. She said, my counsel stood to his feet and I stood up and said, excuse me. She said, I looked at the judge and I said, judge, I'm guilty of every crime that I've committed. She said, you could literally just feel the breath go out of the room. And the judge said, April, uh, I don't think you understand. If you plead guilty and are convicted, he said, you will die in a prison cell. And she said, I understand that, judge. She said, but I've met a man that they called Jesus. And she said, you might be able to lock up my carnal body, but there's a God in heaven that set my spirit free. 
She said the judge went back into the chambers, uh, came out a little while later. Uh, she said he leaned over that desk and said, I've been doing this uh, for 35 years. He said, and never in 35 years have I had happen what has happened here today. Uh, he said, April, you're guilty. She said, yes, I am. He said, you're guilty and you know it and I know it and every person in this courtroom knows it. He said, but when I went back into my chambers, he said, I felt something come in the room. And I begin to weep and I begin to cry. Hallelujah. He said, April, my job is not just to carry out. Hallelujah. He said, my job is not only to carry out punishment. Hallelujah. He said, but my job is to judge and judge righteously. He said, something came in the room. He said, and I have had an encounter with perhaps the Jesus that you spoke about. He said, I set you free. You're free to go. Come on, somebody. I'm coming to tell you right now. She walked out of the room, set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm coming to tell you when you know him, he's going to know you. Oh, somebody worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got to understand right now that there is a God that is faithful and there is a God that is true. Hallelujah. And just like the apostle, hallelujah, some of you have come into this house and the Lord has asked you the question, who do you say that I am? To the addict, he is deliverance. To the criminal, he is honesty. To the fatherless, he is a father. Uh, to the friendless, he's a friend that walks closer than a... Come on, somebody. Uh, do you know uh, who he is to you? Uh, I surmise to you today that there is a God in heaven uh, that has reached his hand into the service uh, that you might know uh, not only who he is, uh, but that he is a rewarder of them that do seek him. Would you stand to your feet, throw your hands in the air, lift up your voice and call out to the Lord. Come on, all over this room right now. All over this room right now. You've got to know the Lord. You've got to know Him in His goodness. Come on, I said you've got to know Him in His power. You've got to know Him. Hallelujah. 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 As I begin to study and read this morning... And as the musicians and praise team come, I begin to open up my Bible and I turn to Genesis, the third chapter. And I turn to it. And it's a story about the serpent that beguiled Adam and Eve that came to them and said, if you, if you will eat of the tree of knowledge, he said that there's some blessing that's going to come to you. They fell prey to him. Hallelujah. Their eyes were opened. And the word says that they knew that they were naked. They clothed them, or rather, they clothed themselves in figs. And when the Lord came walking through the cool of the garden, they were nowhere to be found. And the Lord cried out. And he said, Adam, Eve, where are you? And the Bible said that they hid themselves for they were ashamed. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, why? Why are you hiding yourselves from me? And Adam said, we were ashamed for we were naked. And the Lord said, Adam, who told you that you were naked? And the Lord spoke to me as I began to read it. That the question is simply this. Hallelujah. Is that there's somebody that walked into this room today. And you've given ear to the enemy that told you that you were depressed. And told you that you were defeated. And told you that you were bound. And told you that things would always be this way. And I hear the voice of the Lord speaking right now to simply ask you this. Uh, who told you that you were this way? Who told you that things would always be the way that they are? Who told you that you would die in the situation that you're in? Uh, come on somebody. Who told you? Who told you that you were hopeless? Who told you that you could not know him? Who told you that you were too far gone? Hallelujah. Because what Adam failed to realize is it was just two chapters before that. That he was made in the image of God. 
Hallelujah. The Lord said, who told you that you were this way? Hallelujah. Because if Adam would have just thought back two chapters ago, he would have recognized something. Hallelujah. That he was the head and not the tail. He was victorious and not defeated. He was above and not beneath. And I feel the Spirit of the Lord speaking in this room right now to simply ask you this. Who told you that you were the way that you are? Hallelujah. Who told you as they begin to speak lies into your ear and into your hearing and into your mind that you would have to remain bound and that you would have to remain this way? Hallelujah. Because the Lord is asking you, whom do you say that he is? Hallelujah. I surmise that he's still the provider. He is still the victor. He is still the way maker. He is still the provider. Come on, somebody. But you've got to believe You've got to believe that God is able to take a situation that you've been walking through for too long. uh, Hallelujah. And begin to turn it in your favor. You've got to believe that the God of heaven who has walked into this room uh, is able to set you free of every toil and care. Uh, Hallelujah. Whom do you say that he is? Let me tell you who he is to me. He's the God that when I look back at 17 years old healed me of cancer. He's the God that when I look back, hallelujah, many years ago, pulled me out of addiction and set me free. When I look back over the course of my life, he is the God that had every reason to walk away from me and give up on me. Yet I found him faithful. He is the God that when the doctor told my mother she would die in her sickness, he was the healer. Hallelujah. He is God. Hallelujah. That when I could not pay my bills, he became my provider. And I sit in this room today looking at a group of people that have had encounters with the Lord. Yet perhaps some of you have forgotten who the Lord is to you. And the Lord stands before you today and simply asks you, do you remember who I am? Because I remember who you are. I remember that you were created in my image. I remember that I created you to be uniquely who you are. And I looked at you and I called you good. And I stand here today to tell you that you must understand. Hallelujah. The way that the Lord feels about you. You've got to understand that he is the father. And you are the children. We are the children of Christ. We're more than just the bride of Christ, but we are the children of Christ. Hallelujah. I thought as a young man that I understood love. And when I, when I became a husband, perhaps I understood love more than I did back then. And I thought for the last five years that I knew love. But it wasn't until I became a father and I looked at this beautiful baby girl that I understood what true love was. Hallelujah. True love is a father that looks at a child and understands that that child could fall into sin. That child could walk away. The child could hate you. The child could talk about you. The child could backbite you. Hallelujah. But there's nothing that that child could do that would cause a father or a mother to love them less. Hallelujah. I know people that have been married and that have perhaps fallen out of love. I had an old man tell me nobody really falls out of love. They fall out of forgiveness. And it's falling out of forgiveness. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. It's falling out of forgiveness that causes us to fall out of love. But when you understand the love of the Father, hallelujah, that I understand that there's nothing that that baby girl could ever do to cause me to love her less. Hallelujah. There's nothing that she could do. Hallelujah. That she couldn't call me and say, Dad, could I come home? That I wouldn't say, come on home, baby. And likewise, there's a Father in heaven that looks at you and there's nothing you could do to fall out of His forgiveness. And there's nothing you could do to fall out of His love. And there's nothing you could do to fall out of His mercy. And thus the Lord stands here today and says, who do you say that I am? Because to you, I am your father. I am love. I am mercy. I am, hear me right now. I hear the voice of the Lord beckoning to somebody today to say, hey, I know that you've walked away. I know that you've turned away, but you need to understand that just because you've walked away from me doesn't mean that I've walked away from you. And just because you've turned away from me doesn't mean that I've turned away from you. Come on, I'm asking you right now. 
Who do you say that he is? Because he is the provider. And he is the healer. And he is the way maker. Hallelujah. And I'm excited about what God's going to do the rest of the week. We're going to dive back into the spirit. We're going to talk about prophecy. And we're going to talk about your calling. And we're going to talk about some great things Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But right now, I feel the spirit of the Lord reaching out his hand to simply say this. Whom do you say that I am? Because if you knew who I was, you would know that I am faithful. And I am just to forgive. You would know that I'm the vine and you're the branch. You would know that I'm the Rose of Sharon. Hallelujah. You would know that I'm El Shaddai. I'm Jehovah Jireh. But more than any of these things, I am your father. And I ask you, child, would you come home? Come on from the front to the back. I'm asking you to move out of your seat down to this altar with your hands lifted high to the Lord. Come on, would you come? Would you come right now? Would you come right now? Come on, I feel the beckoning of the Spirit right now. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody needs to throw your hands in the air. Somebody needs to lift up your voice. And somebody needs to let the Lord begin to speak. Come on, all over this house right now. Hallelujah. I recognize that perhaps I've not spoken to everybody. But I know that there's one or two. Hallelujah. I know that there's three or four or five that are in this room today. Hallelujah. That God has met you here to ask you, who do you say that I am? Come on. He is faithful. He is just to forgive. Come on, somebody throw your hands in the air. Lift up your voice to the Lord.